it's, there's a record amount of gold buying, even by Western Central Bank. Or Western Central Bank stopped selling and they are repatriating gold. And this all shows gold is coming back within the monetary system. And that's a situation in which you could end up having wars and more crises. And I'm afraid we're on that path now. And when you have wars and crises, you always see smart money fleeing towards gold. And that also explains why gold is on the verge of a breakout in US dollars, but gold has been moving higher in all other currencies. Gold has been setting records in all other currencies. So that's a clear uptrend. After the gold standard was dismantled, gold lost its place at the heart of the monetary system. Since the 1970s, currencies have not been linked to gold, nor have economies settled their deficits in bullion. But 50 years later, central banks seem to be returning to the metal. The U.S., for instance, severed the dollar's link to gold in 1971, a move known as the Nixon shock. Yet, even today, central banks hold vast gold reserves, impacting the metal's price with their action. This isn't an entirely new trend. Data shows that central banks have been net buyers of gold since 2009, yet momentum has accelerated over the past few years. According to the World Gold Council, central banks bought 1,037 tons of gold in 2023, just shy of the record amount. While this is a significant change, economist Willem Middelkoop argues that gold is emerging as a crucial player in the evolving monetary landscape, symbolizing a challenge to the dominance of the U.S. dollar since its detachment from the gold standard in 1971. Highlighting the recent surge in gold purchases by various countries, including Turkey, Eastern European nations, China and Russia, Willem underscores a broader trend of gold's reintegration into the global monetary framework. He describes gold as the anti-dollar since Nixon's actions in 1971 and suggests that influential entities on Wall Street are actively suppressing its price to maintain the dominance of fiat currencies. The geopolitical implications of this shift highlight the emergence of a deglobalization trend and the increasing assertiveness of BRICS nations in challenging the Western-dominated financial system. As a result, Willem has warned about the two possible scenarios of potential conflicts arising from divergent monetary agendas, one where East and West collaborate to transition to a new monetary paradigm, and another where confrontation leads to further instability, driving investors toward gold as a safe haven asset. We will present clips from Willem Middlecoops with David Lynn, but before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you, and enjoy the video. I can prove we're in the start of this process because we've seen over 20 central banks adding to their gold reserves in the last 18 months. We've seen record gold buying by central banks. You have to go back to 69 to see the, this amount of physical buying by central banks. And why is that significant? In 1969, we experienced the implosion of the London Gold Pool. London Gold Pool was the Western central banks selling gold, keeping gold fixed at $35 per ounce. This all imploded in 68, 69, and that's why Nixon had to take the dollar of the gold standard in right. 71. And we're in a similar process now. So central banks are starting to flee towards physical gold again because they know there are big changes coming within the monetary system. It's, there's a record amount of gold buying even by Western central bank or Western central bank stopped selling and they are repatriating gold. And this all shows gold is coming back within the monetary system. Gold is the anti-dollar since 1971. Yeah. Since Nixon took the dollar of the gold standard, right. gold is the anti-dollar. So um, the usual suspects on Wall Street are trying to keep gold down. They try to keep gold beneath $2,000 per ounce. We've, we've seen some traders of JP Morgan being uh, sent to prison because of uh, manipulating the precious metals market. Yeah. And even the DOJ explained that the metal desk of JP Morgan was a criminal enterprise. So uh, gold being the anti-dollar is, is an enemy for the US. In a way, it is anti-all fiat money. Yeah. Um, however, you see that countries like China and Russia have been proposing to add gold um, to, let's say, the SDR, the IMF currency basket. They said, let's add gold as the sixth currency to the SDR currency baskets. So the, the, our fiat money system will become more stable again, but the US is, is not wanting to go that route. And that's why the BRICS have decided, 
will disconnect from the West in a way and we'll start building our own system. We see this deglobalization trend. So we're moving away from um, a situation where the IMF and the US is in control over the monetary system. And now we're in the situation that the BRICS countries have joined forces and getting stronger by, um, well, by the day and working to introduce their own financial system in a few years. And, and that system could be competing with the Western dollar system. And because the BRICS countries are more or less in charge of all commodity trading or a large part of commodity trading, when a country like Saudi Arabia will demand another currency to buy their oil instead of the US dollar, we could be in for, an, for, for, for a large shock. But in the book, I ended the book with two scenarios. Um, my hopeful scenario, my optimistic scenario was that East and the West would keep talking and working together to move our monetary system to the next phase, to find a successor for the dollar. My negative scenario was that there would be a confrontation, that the East and the West wouldn't be able to join forces and would be working on different systems. And that's a situation in which you could end up having wars and more crisis. And I'm afraid we're on that path now. And when you have wars and crisis, you always see smart money fleeing towards gold. Following the end of the Second World War, the Allies gathered at Bretton Woods and anointed the US dollar as the world's principal reserve currency, pegging it against gold at an exchangeable rate of $35 an ounce. However, in 1971, the dollar was decoupled due to insufficient US gold reserves, rendering it fiat money. This event signaled the potential end of dollar dominance. Willem highlighted the transition from the long-standing dollar-centric system established post-World War II, noting that countries are increasingly moving away from reliance on the U.S. dollar. In March 2023, China settled payment for UAE gas in its currency rather than U.S. dollars for the first time. Then in November, China and Saudi Arabia signed a currency swap agreement, citing a desire to expand the use of their currencies. There are more troubling signs for the U.S. dollar, even though central banks' foreign exchange reserves have been growing steadily year on year for more than 20 years. The percentage held in U.S. dollars reached its lowest point in the fourth quarter of 2022, as this chart shows. Willem sees this as indicative of a broader BRICS revolution, where countries are actively working to establish alternative trading and financial systems outside the traditional Western-dominated frameworks. BRICS nations seek a new currency due to dissatisfaction with the current dollar-centric system, where power dynamics favor Western nations. Let's get back to the interview. Since the end of the Second World War, we're in this dollar system. It's all about the dollar. Trade, commodity trade worldwide was on the dollar. And now we see countries moving away from that. Saudi Arabia just joined the BRICS alliance. Saudi Arabia was the friend of the US in the petrodollar deal. Um, Saudis have been supporting the US dollar since 1974. And now the Saudis are pivoting east. And that shows that this whole BRICS alliance, uh, you could say there's a BRICS revolution. And what's the BRICS revolution? They are working on a parallel trading system. They're working on a parallel uh, financial system. And one day we might see the start and the birth of a BRICS currency. And that could become a competitor for the US dollar. And then we're talking reset. Many countries outside the West are fed up with the current dollar system. They're fed up with the fact that a country like Belgium has more voting rights in the IMF than Brazil. So the US, combined with Europe, created a system after the Second World War, which, which is very beneficial for the, for the Western countries. And now we have the rise of China and the rise of many other countries. And they want to have a larger seat at the table. And since the West isn't offering them a larger seat at the table, they're creating their own clubs, they're creating their own organizations. So instead of um, joining uh, the IMF, they start to build on their new development bank, which is like a BRICS bank, is providing finance for so many countries. And now we have 140 countries not joining the Western sanctions. So the world is changing. And these changes, that's a process which takes 
10, 15, 20 years. Central bank demand for gold will significantly impact the global bull market. Forecasts indicate a potential doubling of reserve holdings over the next decade, emphasizing the pivotal role of central banks. Despite varying growth rates, the outlook remains strong, reflecting gold's enduring appeal as a reliable asset. Is gold's resurgence signaling a fundamental shift in the global monetary landscape? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, remember to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.